So we rented a sod cutter from Home Depot and we ended up renting a trailer as well because we didn't want to have to lift this sod cutter up into our the back of our, our van. We could probably fit it in the back of our van, which we used to pull. This is the first time I've used a trailer with this van. So this thing is a big workout. It's, it's not easy to run. Um, if your ground is very even and level, it's not too bad. And it is much better than taking out the sod by hand. And also is better than using a backhoe or a tractor because then you can give the sod away and we've had people coming all day long to pick up our, our pile of sod that's out there. Uh, so one of the things you want to, uh, some things you want to consider when using this is there's already how to on how to use this. I'm not going to go over the details exactly on how to use it, but uh, you want to wear thick gloves. I've got blisters on my hands from using it all day long. I'm exhausted. It will wear you out. Um, so you want to make sure you get a good rest the night before and do it on a cool day where it's not too hot or not too cold, just good weather. Um, this thing, one tip here is this thing you have to lock in place really well. So to get it to the depth that you want to cut, you have to lift this up, lift up the whole thing. And then let me loosen that first. So this thing you have to loosen it, lift this up. So you have to tighten this really, really, really tight. And if you don't tighten that really super tight, what's going to happen is when you go to cut the sod is it will bounce, bounce, bounce. And then as it bounces around, this thing will come loose. So you got to tighten it as tight as you possibly can, as tight as you can get it each time, which is honestly kind of a pain in the butt because it wears your hands out just tightening this back and forth because you have to loosen it every time you get to the end of a row so that you can get the blade out from underneath the sod. So you just have to tighten that really good. Now keep in mind that you don't want to go over roots. You got to stay away from trees. If it gets, we had some major roots get caught in the blade, and it's really very difficult to get it out. Um, it can get stuck in there really well. So you want to stay away from tree roots. Mark your sprinklers. We ran over a few sprinkler heads, which isn't a big deal because we're taking out the grass anyway. But you want to mark your sprinklers the day before you rent this. So the day before you rent it, you want to mark out your sprinklers. You want to. Be careful not to go in tree roots, and it's not going to work on a hill, so don't even try to use it on a hill. So if your yard has a lot of tree roots that are close to the surface, or if your yard has a lot of hills to it, it's very difficult to manage on hills and with tree roots. That's the biggest two issues with it. But having said that, it is really useful and helpful to get rid of the grass much easier than digging it out by hand with a shovel. And the nice thing is, is you can get a uh, post online that you've got free sod that we've been, we posted online that we've got free sod that we've been getting rid of. People have been coming all day long picking up our sod, which is nice that they haul it away and use it for us so it gets used and doesn't get thrown away. Um, so, but it's a workout. It shakes you a lot and it's going to make you really tired. It's been an exhausting long day using this. Um, but it was worth it. Uh, it's good to have it done. But if, if you don't want to do it, you could consider hiring a landscaper to cut it out for you. That's a very difficult thing to do with the sod cutter. It's a lot of work and exhausting. So anyway, it's one, one thing to consider is maybe this might be worth something that's hiring out. Kind of my rule of thumb is if I have to rent a big piece of equipment from Depot, it's maybe worth hiring it out to someone because <laughs> you're going to be pretty tired and dead at the end of the day and uh, so anyway, it's a, a helpful piece of equipment, but uh, there are some issues with it that some limitations that I'd say so you want to be careful with tree roots especially. So I hope that helps. You can see we have the thing tilted up, the side cutter is tilted up and it's resting on the blade there. And that's where it's supposed to be when you starting to cut the sides. So we have this this black part resting on this red line right here. You can see right there, we have it set to, to um, two inches sod cut depth. So usually the typical is inch and a half, but we want to remove a little bit more of the dirt because we're going to be placing a gravel and rockways. We're going to have to dig out some of the dirt anyway. Um, so that's what we're doing here. We'll get it started and give it a try here. guys very comfortable 
I've used this hitch that we have for bike racks and things, but I've never pulled a trailer with it before. But I ended up just buying this, uh, the ball post and this trailer part that you need to pull with at, just at Walmart for, I can't remember, like $30 for the, the setup here. And it worked, worked nice. We just pulled it from Home Depot to our house about I don't know, 10 miles or so and over bumps and turns and it did fine. It held up, held up just fine and worked well. So ended up using the trailer rental and renting this. The uh, sod cutter for 24 hours is about $110 and then the trailer rental is about $60. So to rent the trailer and the sod cutter, if we, if we keep it overnight and t return it by tomorrow morning will probably cost us about 170 to 180 dollars total um, but really nice to have the trailer because it just kind of rolls you can just turn on the sod cutter and and use this ramp to get up onto the trailer without having to lift this thing is really heavy 300 pound uh, sod cutter so you don't have to lift it up and break your back getting it into the back of the the van or truck if you have a truck so we'll give it a try we're going to remove some sod in our yard and try to save some water in our house by reducing the amount of grass that we have and doing some more garden areas and a little bit of xeriscaping in a few places. So we will give this thing a try and I'll let you know how it works and if it's if it's helpful or not. It, um, from what I hear, sod cutters are worth it to make the sod removal process go quickly. So I'll let you know how, what I think and if it's, if it's worth your time to try it. <laughs> 